This is Kate Beckinsale. You're listening to Beckinsale. What makes a trilogy a trilogy? Is it having three and only three movies in a film series? Is it having only two sequels that count and ignoring the rest? Should spin-offs be included? What about prequels and reboots? Can a trilogy start over after a story arc is completed? These are just a few of the questions we'll be completely glossing over on this episode of Bacon <laughs> Thank Cell. you. That's confusing, and I just want to call everything a trilogy. Yes. No. But welcome to Bacon Cell. I'm Joel. I'm Kent. And I'm Zach. We'd like to thank you for listening to our last episode, our We Ate Everything at Arby's. We're still recovering. I, I, my heart hurts. Yeah. Uh, but there were, my heart is also very um, warm and open <laughs> well, to all segue. the lovely comments. Sure. Teddy Swenson3812 said, great episode. I went to Arby's last week and not knowing it was episode prep and still went back Monday while listening. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, I felt personally attacked by the hate from my beloved Big Montana, a.k.a. Half Pounder, a.k.a. Yeah. the OG meat. Sorry. Meat. Uh, douse it in Arby's sauce, pound it, no. and enjoy the meat coma that comes after. All hail the king. Um, I'm I'm a pass on that one, but Please. thank you for the suggestion. Mm. At PMU Dragon said, I love French dip and the turkey bacon ranch, but my favorite is the super. It's not on the menu. It's the a roast super. beef sandwich with red ranch sauce and lettuce and tomato on it. Red ranch. My husband worked at Arby's when we were first married, so I ate lots of the, the five for five. A lot of comments around the five for five. Yeah, five for it was a good time. It really a was. lot of comments. I think Joel was kind of rude to a few people. Several. What? Um, yeah, he was, he was no. spicy this week. Kendall Eliason says, the boys finally flew too close to the sun, taking years <laughs> off their own lives for my entertainment. Hashtag RIP bacon sale. Hashtag so sad. You're so welcome. Sad. So sad. So sad. Nicole D. Hale said, go ahead and judge me. Apparently I'm a sauce pervert, but yep, I love horsey sauce. <laughs> I like mixing it with Arby sauce wow. and having it as my curly fry sauce. And Joel was... No, spicy, spicy. we here yeah, at the I Church of the know. Curly Fry do not approve of that. Oh. Yeah, a uh, recent convert. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, finally, Jeff uh, at RIP Burt Convy said, I thought there was nothing more unappetizing to me than beef and cheddar, but then I learned fish and cheddar exists. Yeah. Thanks for trying the brisket and saving me the trouble. I've always wondered if that was good. It's not. Uh, I always order a classic roast beef and mozzarella sticks. Yummy. Yeah, I think that's that's a solid That's fine. Order. Yeah, that's sure. Meal. Meal. You add a shake. That's yeah. my answer to everything. Add a shake or add a shake. turnover. Yeah. Put a bird on it. All right. <laughs> Thank you, uh, everyone, for commenting. And I, I, I hey, look hey. back to the Subway episode when we did the episode and sure. everyone was like, well, I'm going to continue never going there. No, I don't know why it makes you feel good. Not a sponsor, but the people who went to Arby's makes me laugh. We know yeah. it's a success if people actually crave the food after we just like blast on it for an hour. Yeah. yeah. And there's even someone who said they were listening to the episode as they were eating at Arby's. And I was like. That's the magic right there. Uh, the Indeed. very first episode of Bacon Cell I ever listened to was we ate everything at Taco Bell. And halfway through the episode, I was in the drive-thru. So I get the appeal. Mm-hmm. I wish I could do that show again for the first time. Um, we should redo it. Just saying. The <laughs> menu has changed a lot. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about today. What are we talking about today, Zach? We're talking about trilogies. Wait, Wait a minute. Didn't we already discuss we trilogies have. on Bacon Cell episode 164, t- taking time to talk trilogies back in July of 2018? That's some cute alliteration there. Yeah. We hey, did. Hey, I, actually, Joel, I don't know that fact. Zach wasn't here. No, no, that was that was with the Jacob years. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The Jacob oh, years. The Jacob years. <laughs> and that was uh, that episode was more about we we had kind of a format we were doing first movies that didn't need sequel, second movie better than the original, yeah. and third movie that killed the franchise. Right. And so it was like the format of what makes a trilogy. Was I yes. on that episode? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't you may have been were. hanging out, hanging out in the background. Could have been. You are, I feel like I was Listen, way back when was, was involved in something. Stand by guy in August. Yeah. Oh no, it was it was uh, the, I was on an episode that was the third <laughs> cable IMAXI race. That's uh, fine. Is there before Feminine August and after Feminine that's August? Like the, in, that's when Zach came. B, BF being, and AF. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, but this, so this episode, we're, we're casting a wider net here. Yeah, we are. We went, hey, it's making sale. Why didn't we just tear it? Yeah. <laughs> well, not only that, but as we were looking to tier trilogies, we realized there's a lot of trilogies out there. You know what's funny? When I think trilogies, I'm like, oh, yeah, Star Wars and like Lord of the Rings. They had a few like that. I think Batman's had a few. And then I go, yeah, that's where it stops. Nope. No, there's a lot. There's a, there's a lot. Well, there's a lot. In well, fact, I, I, I disagree. Yeah. Well, in fact, there's a lot that Kent went, hey, hey, guys, hey, guys. What if <laughs> we did a trilogy of trilogy shows? Yeah! <laughs> the trilogy, trilogy of trilogies! No, no, that's not, not what we're no, talking not about here. No, 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 it's no. not a bracket, but it's, it's a show. 
This so, one, it's more like a box of boxes. So this is the first installment. We'll see how it goes if the franchise dies after this. But the first installment <laughs> of trilogy tiering, which means... Oh, can't wait for that third one. Which, well, it, well, that's just it. So we, we randomized which ones we were going to put on here because we didn't, didn't want to have, have all the heavy hitters right here out of the gate. Yeah. So we're saving some for later. So even if we don't talk about your favorite trilogy, no, it may be coming up. But hey, we're always open to suggestions. Sorry, no Aladdin direct-to-video trilogy this time. Listen, the future. King of Thieves is a good movie. I'm a return to Jafar man. You are yeah, not. Return Nobody Jafar is. is. Come on. A-L all the way. Oh, oh, easily. You are not a Return of Jafar fan. I've had Dad and Castellaneto as uh, as Genie instead of Robin Williams. Yeah. Yeah, thanks and for I, that fun fact. Doesn't make it good. I liked him better. So we have 25 trilogies we'll be talking about today. And Joel, what are our rules regarding tiering? That we have nine tier ones, nine, or excuse me, eight tier ones, what? nine tier twos, what? and eight tier threes. So if you're, if you're playing along. And we're not, we're not saying, we're not home. saying, hey, there's 15 tier ones and two tier twos. We need an even number. It's an even Except split. Except for we're one more tier two, because... Right, right, yeah. We need, we're Numbers. Extra mid. Mid. Well, let's be honest. There's more tier twos probably of trilogies than anything else. Yeah. 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 And let's also talk about the idea of a trilogy, kind of like I addressed in the opening and kind of like Zach's disagreeing with. I disagree. There are some loose... Heartily. ...trilogies here. Meaning that there's an asterisk next to it because, hey, there may be more movies out there, but we only really count the three main ones yeah. as the main I ones. St- I stand by it. We're identifying the, the, the proper trilogies here. Yeah. Yes, we, yes. there might have been uh, cash grabs later on down the road, sure. but there are proper trilogies here. And sometimes we're pulling those cash grabs in. Sometimes we're saying, yes, this, <laughs> this spinoff is part of this trilogy sometimes now. Sometimes they're barely related. Because we need it to fit to how many we need. <laughs> So uh, the way it works, we're going to go around and each give a tier one being the highest, tier two being the middle, or, or tier three being the lowest. It's it's okay. There's some garbage examples on here, but we need tier threes. It's fine. Yeah, absolutely. It's fine. Everybody needs a good tier three every it's now and true. then. It's true. All right. That's why I'm here. Our, our yeah. first trilogy we're talking is the Oceans trilogy. With this an asterisk. Is ocean, yeah. Well, this is specifically, we're talking Oceans 11, 12, and 13. Yeah, because Whoa. there was Oceans 8. Nah, it doesn't count. <laughs> Doesn't it doesn't exist. I like that Oceans 8 doesn't count, but Oceans 12 somehow does it's in fine. the universe. It's fine. So this uh, this entire series is directed by Steven Soderbergh. It stars George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Matt Damon. One funny thing that we're going to comment on is sometimes directors change. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes actors change. Sometimes they don't. The funny thing is I, I was looking at it and I said, you know, when the actors, well, excuse me, when the directors switch off a lot, the quality diminishes. Yes. And if they keep the same director, generally it stays the same. But there are exceptions to both of those rules. Meaning Indeed. this one? Well, so Steven Soberg is the director of all these, like we said. The synopsis, if you don't know the Oceans series, it's basically a large group of likable criminals pull off a series of heists. Yes. Looking at the numbers here, Oceans 12 is the highest moneymaker of the tri- of this trilogy. But basically banking on the, the likability of the first one. Yeah, yeah, it's essentially like, hey, that first one was great. But the first and third made about the same, about $85 million. Okay. And then also in quality, uh, it dips. Uh, IMDb ratings dip for Oceans 12, come back with... Uh, Ocean's 13. Same with my ratings, personally. You sure? Yeah. But I'm giving this a tier two mm-hmm. because they're all fun in I, ways. Joel, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah? Yeah. No, I, that, that is exactly it. I, I do think while there is a quality drop-off, there's still plenty of fun to be had yeah. in these movies. The I think the first one is the best. I think, unfortunately, for 12 and 13, 11 is really, really good. Yeah. And eight, we're not talking about. But no. uh, see, I'm going to disagree with you vocally, but I'm going to give it the same tier. I do think it's a tier two because Ocean's Eleven is one of those. How can you disagree and give it the same as that? Grade? No, hear me out. I Ocean's Eleven. You, we're going to end Ocean's up Eleven is, is quite good. It is one of those great Provo P- PG-13 a, movies from back amazing. in the day. Right? It's great. It's really good. And then Ocean's Twelve is one of the worst movies I've ever seen, hyperbole included. I hate Ocean's Twelve. And if Ocean's Thirteen followed in the tradition of Ocean's Twelve. This whole trilogy would be shot, right? There would only be one Ocean's but movie. But it's, it's a, it's but a because up. thirteen came out, and I was like, you know what? It's not Ocean's Eleven, but it's good. It makes it a tier two. But I hate twelve. Yeah. Tier Should I say it again? Tier twos all around. Yeah. Tier twos. Tiers two. Tiers or two. Tiers, tier twos. Two, two tiers. Two, two, two twos tier. Top bottom. <laughs> yeah. Now we have the Karate Kid With trilogy. An asterisk. So we're good. this is specifically the Karate Kid part. Well, I guess the Karate, the Karate Kid. Kid. The Karate Kid part. Okay, so Karate Kid came out in 1984. Karate Kid Part 2 came out in 1986. Karate Kid Part 3 came out in 1989. And then you get the next Karate Kid. The next Karate Kid. Who, what, what famous person is in this movie? Hilary Swank was in Hilary the next Swank. Karate Kid. Yeah, which is a prequel to Million Dollar Baby. We're which ignoring, she went into boxing. We're ignoring the, the Jaden Smith one. Yeah, the you re- know what? We're not really counting reboots as much. The we're, studio isn't because there's going to be a Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan Karate well, Kid Well, we're movie. ignoring Cobra Kai as well here. Don't yes, because that's not a movie. Cobra Kai. 
But that, yeah, so we're only really talking about the th- three Karate Kid movies here. These are all directed by John G. A- Avildsen. These star Ralph Macchio, Pat Morita, Elizabeth Shue, and William Zabka. The series follows the journey of Daniel Sun, who's being taught in the ways of martial arts by an experienced mentor, Mr. Miyagi, in order to stand up for himself after being bullied. All right, guys, it's been a minute. Is there something, the third one's about like a bonsai tree or something? I guess the second I, one. Yeah. This, no. No, the third one is kind of a redux of the first movie. What? So the second one is all about kind of doing flashbacks of Miyagi's past. Right. No, no, going no, to Okinawa. I, I exact, I, I, isn't the bonsai tree The second in the, one in is the they cave? go to Japan. Yeah. Wait, don't they do, do the they trim the bonsai the second, tree the, in the, Japan? The second one in Japan is where they spin the thing. Right. Yes. So bonsai tree, I think, is number Hold three. on one more time. They're both very good. I think for one and two, very good. Not so much three, but I, I really forget it. I don't like three either, and I never did as a kid because I was like, "Oh yeah, it's just more Cobra Kai and karate him tournaments." Hanging in like a canyon or something, trying to get a tree. Yeah, That's but it. but uh, I think three is made stronger by Cobra Kai. Well, I can't. I think speak this to entire that. trilogy think so? is made stronger by Cobra Kai itself, and I needed to fill one tier one spot. Whoa! And this can't. jumps to tier one because I think one and two. These aren't like amazing movies, obviously, right? But I mean, this is Bacon Cell history, and also these are movies that, as a kid, I loved. This is my nostalgic vote for tier one, even though I think three is a weaker movie. And I think that's how a lot of these go. Even if there's kind of a weaker movie in the series, if two movies made a like a significant impact on me, it probably gets a tier one. What about you guys? You've got me reconsidering. This was one of my bubble choices as well bubble it, me on the edge of one tier on the another. edge of one tier or another couldn't quite decide i did end up i mean again it's not a thing i understand this is a high tier two okay for Nothing. me but i think it's because i i find a fall off in three to the point where i don't even remember it sure but you, you remember the bonsai tree and the repelling that's it. yeah i remember and the mean guy from the vietnam tree. and i mean yeah, sure but i love one and two so much there uh, i watched them a bunch of times and you know what's funny i can tell you f- that it, they at least in my house hold up because my young stepchildren both love these shows. Yeah. They'll they'll do the wax on, wax off thing. Classic they talk about sports it all montage the time. movies from they, back in the day. They, they really like it. And yeah. so I think it's holding up over time. It great, but it did end up in as a tier two for me. What about you, Joel? I'm on that side of the bubble as well. It's Ooh, a tier two for me. Rude. Uh, because like I said, Karate Kid one is so good. Uh-huh. So good. And then Karate Kid three, even or oh, two, I was like, even better. Oh. And then three was not good. Yeah. And so it, it's, a, it's more of a dip in quality than okay. I wanted from so the you, first You saw one. a slide. I did. Okay. Karate Kid two, by the way, the highest money, the highest money maker here with $320 million. And like the third one only got 96 million. So uh-huh. the audiences agree the IMDb score goes down. My score goes down, but yeah, Karate Kid three is not great. And, Tier two overall. Okay. okay. Wasn't easy though. No, not at all. Great yeah, movie. I guess I like it. Go most. watch the first two and then Cobra Kai, I guess. All right. This one's going to take some explaining. <laughs> this is what is known as the Cornetto trilogy. Yeah. The three flavors. Cornetto has a U in the flavor because there. Because it's British. Yes. And this includes Shaun of the Dead, which came out in 2004, Hot Fuzz in 2007, and The World's End in 2013. These are all written and directed by Edgar Wright. And there's kind of like the Venn diagram, the trifecta here. Yeah. You have the director, Edgar Wright. Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. Nick Frost. Yeah. And the combination of those three uh, is a beautiful flavor. My overall synopsis here just says zombies, cultists, and aliens. Yeah. Now, to be clear, this is... But I would not call this a true trilogy because in my opinion a trilogy has to be a series of movies that have a beginning middle end mm-hmm. that tell spiritual essentially trilogy. a singular tri- a singular story however um, of all the cheater trilogies this is the, mm-hmm. the easiest one for me because it's like yeah they're spiritually all connected yeah mm-hmm. even though they are not the same characters by the way they might as well be cornetto is ice cream yeah over yeah. in the uk Oh and, and, and yeah, they, yeah. We talked about some previous shows, and I people may be like the Cornetto that, trilogy. What does that mean? Is that a brand of cigarettes? It, is that a mafia family? Maybe. <laughs> that's <laughs> no, weird. That, I never really thought of Cornetto. People not knowing what Cornetto is. That's yeah, weird. but so like Shaun of the Dead, it's a zombie movie. Blood. So that's why they have strawberry Cornetto. Yes. Uh, right. Hot Fuzz. It's blue chocolate because blue color police. And then World's End. It's an alien movie, so it's mint chocolate. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the highest turner here is Hot Fuzz in the middle again. Uh, with the uh, world's end being the lowest earner and also the lowest scoring on score, but they're all pretty high. Yeah. People enjoy these and I enjoy all these movies. I'm giving it a tier one. It's a tier one. It's an easy tier one. Guys. Okay. So we agree. Oh it's, yeah. Well, I agree. The world's end is not great. Shaun of the Dead is it's, one of my all-time favorite here's movies. Here's the thing. Visually, uh, the way it's edited, it is a tier one movie. It is a Absolutely. fun movie to watch. I, I wonder, Edgar Wright's skills really went there. I just think the story was like, okay. Is there fatigue? Maybe. I, I actually wonder, if you've never seen these three movies, start at World's End. 
Mm -hmm. and work your way backwards you might have fun but you look where his finesse was as a filmmaker and he's having a lot of fun with world's end i just don't think the story was it appeals on what your genre is like horror genre sure you're probably like sean the dead more hot if you're an action fan you're like hot fuzz more yeah and if you like you know lesser things you like world's end more drinking uh, aliens (laughs) yeah yeah i have uh sat on the show before i do sci-fi i prefer hot fuzz but like to to your point joel that's just because that's more to my taste yeah and hot fuzz is a big earner here and but sean the dead does beat it in in imdb ratings also timothy dalton is yeah, it it's so really good. hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have the Planet of the Apes, but specifically the more recent reboot. Yes. So the the series is, and, and the titles are a little confusing and maybe out of order, but it's Rise of the Planet of the Apes from 2011, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes from, I Day think, of 2014. The yeah. And then Night, War no. of the Planet of the Apes, which I think was 2017? 2017, yes. Every Planet of the Apes movie, of which there are a lot, is... Of the Planet of the Apes. Yes. Yeah, and that we should clarify, this has an asterisk because there are a lot of Planet of the Apes movies. Right. And technically, the new ones, the reboots, are prequels leading up to the Charlton Heston one. And for the Tim Burton one, completely unrelated. And yeah. they were meant to be a standalone trilogy. This is what well, kind of like die on this hill, even though Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes was just released. Just which came out. Continue the story, but it wasn't direct that's, sequel. That was, that was Disney wanting to make money off but of this. This is really what, and we'll get into this later, this is really what Disney should be doing with Star Wars, which they made another movie and it's 300 years in the future. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's fine. Like, like change okay. the story. By, by Zach's de- Tatooine, by the way. By, by Zach's definition of trilogy, this one fully like meets the cut. By okay, way, overall okay. synopsis, a post-apocalyptic world in which humans and super intelligent apes clash for control. Yeah. And this one shows the outbreak. It shows how this all started back in the day or back in the day in this parallel world. James yeah. Franco just wanted to heal Alzheimer's. <laughs> and then, you, then you see it was so honorable, like the apes gaining intelligence. And then you see the war. If this and why this is a trilogy, this is Caesar's story. Yes. Uh, this Andy Serkis as Caesar voice and body actor. Uh, and I will say it right now. Peak Andy Circus, more than God. Yes, really. I love him in this. I one. might agree with you. I love it's, I it's refined. Disagree. Everything that came from Gollum, it, it, it this is refined. I love Caesar as a character. I think the story arc is fascinating. I love which these one movies. is Caesar? He's the the one. Which, he's, which monkey is he? He's the, the one, the main one. He's the, the one, one on the poster. The one ah, it's not a monkey. It's an ape. The Trick one with you. the thing on his face. Oh, rude! The first one was directed by Rupert Sanders, and you can kind of tell vibe wise, like it was like Rupert a, a, Sanders, or Rupert Wyatt, Rupert Wyatt. That's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you can tell like this movie like kind of came out of nowhere. Nowhere, no one really had the expectations. And everyone was kind of good. And then Matt, Matt Reeves, who was kind of still a new director, for sure, comes on with this vision and makes incredible like a, a second and third movie. Yeah, and uh, the second movie, uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, coming in the highest earner here with seven hundred eleven million. The others are around four hundred and almost five hundred million. Yeah, and uh, pretty even keel on IMDb ratings here. They're all like high sevens. Right, so they're right around there. Uh, Ken, I know the monkey movies are one of your favorite things in the world. This is one of my favorite trilogies. I think this is a near perfect trilogy. So you're obviously giving it a tier one. Tier one, all the way. All right. Zach, what okay, about you? Okay. I'm also giving it a tier one. Okay. I think these are ah. fantastic. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to watch these again in advance of this new movie. Huh. Joel, Joel I'm worried. Them. I've never, I've, you know, I watched the old Planet of the Apes, Charlton Heston, and it was fine. A little campy. Oh, I hate those. And then, Full blown hate them. I, well, they, of, they have a whole the series. Ones? They're terrible. They have a the whole first series one is of that. interesting. I watched, the Tim, I watched the Tim Burton plan of the apes. That's terrible. Also it's terrible. Horrible. horrible. So this franchise does not have a very good but then, taste in my mouth. And then I watched the, the, monkey, the cute little monkey movies that I forgot about after I watched them. Mm, Koba? Uh, Koba's not cute. Which one's Koba? He's the villain. He's the Dawn. one. That's right. Is he the one that yells no? Or is that no, Caesar? that's Caesar. Oh, okay. Anyway, I give it to tier one. Okay. Oh, my heart. So, uh, I was like, he's already given tier three, and I'm already sad. I do mock these because yeah, uh, they, I love them so they much. They blend together in my mind. It really sure. kind of feels like one story to me. Yeah, but which is I, good. That is good to me. It is because it, it feels like one cohesive story. I agree with the fourth movie. But <laughs> when uh, I, looked at, three, I looked at my ratings later. here, I have a four, a three point five, and a three point five. Those are all. Because you like the first one the most. Yeah. Okay. That would that would be was like because that was when it was like oh this is going to lead to the planet of the apes. And so it was really kind of like, it's, that's cool. It's it, it's a bizarre story in the grander context of the Planet of the Apes, you know, franchise. But that first movie, which is Rise. No. Yeah, Rise. Dawn. Rise. It's Rise. No, uh, it should Rise, be Dawn, but it's Rise. Rise, Dawn, War, Kingdom. There you go. That and movie then, is, it's <laughs> so, it's it's just a small family drama, basically. Yeah. yeah. And it's so fascinating that it, it leads to this crazy situation. Yeah. But I will say the part when Caesar finally says no, mm-hmm. my yes. blood ran cold when he said that. Like to just Malfoy that moment. too. Yeah. It's so yeah. Good. It's a good Spoilers. moment. Spoilers? Okay. Tier one. Tier, Tier one's one. all around. 
Uh, speaking of tier one franchises, we have Look Who's Talking, <laughs> <laughs> which includes Look Who's Talking in 1989, the Monkeys Talk, Look Who's Talking I mean, Two apes. in 1990, and Look Who's Talking Now in 1993. Which one is the, with the dogs? That's three. Now, That's uh. Look Who's Talking Now. The plot: uh, This is a family, and they have their kids and their pets. But you get to hear the inner voices of the kids and the pets throughout the, the movie. First, the first one's Bruce Willis. Yes. Second one's Roseanne. Roseanne yeah. and Bruce Willis. Yeah. What? And then the third one is Danny DeVito, Danny DeVito and, Diane and Keaton. That's it. Diane yeah. Keaton. So the first two movies are directed by Amy Heckerling. And then the third one is Tom Ropolowski. Yeah. Okay. Chris now, Alley. Here's the thing. The first, yeah, movie, Volta. Volta. The first movie made $290 million. This is, this is like a quick little comedy. This, the next couple movies, $48 million and $10 million. And Definitely I'll be honest, drop off. very biologically educational for me um, in the very beginning. Yes, hey, yes. Why, why were we watching this and enjoying it as kids? I don't know. Yeah. These are all really low raters uh, on... A, IMDb as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing, nothing above a six, uh, six point which is actually kind of difficult on IMDb uh, to get yeah. lower than six because these are bad in tier three. But these are childhood favorites of mine. Even I, wait, the first two, the first not, two, especially not three. Three was I didn't really care for three. Yeah. But like I thought Mikey was hilarious. I like hearing the inner voice of the kid. The baby was really just. Were you kind of done by two though? Uh, with Roseanne, which yeah. you've probably seen uh, the the animated gif of, of the little girl like shaking the yeah. brush furiously with an angry face. That's look who's talking to. Right. And uh, I'm giving this a tier two because even <laughs> though I know it's dumb, wins it over, huh? even though I know it's dumb, there's something about these movies that appealed to me as a kid. It still appeals to me as an adult. Ooh. I'm actually kind of nervous to watch them again. Uh, you know, what? Uh, I, I would watch them with your kids. I, I would actually wait. Ke- I'm not educating my kids like that. <laughs> you were educated that way. I love open the door. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But Kent. Uh, yeah. Kent. Low T. If this is tier yeah. three. <laughs> Low T tier three. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Make it sell as educational today. <laughs> now we have Blair Witch. There's which th- includes there's the Blair Witch three. Project, 1999, Book of Shadows, colon, Blair Witch 2, two th- in 2000, and Blair Witch in 2016. Each of these has different directors. Yeah. So are, are they a related story? Yes. Somewhat. Okay. So like, like I'll a, break a, it down for you. I'm guessing it's a related uh, Zach, you've seen the issue? first one? I've seen the first one. Okay. So in that first one, three students you vanish watch it. after yeah. traveling into a forest to film a documentary on the local Blair Witch legend. Okay. Found footage movie, black and white and colored. And times. one year later, they released a, the most rushed movie ever because that movie was so successful. And honestly, yeah. Zeitgeist at the time. The oh. first movie made $247 million. In, in the second movie, Book of Shadows. Tourists go to the woods after seeing the original movie. How meta. Oh. And deal with their own neurosis. I mean, it's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It's horrible, right? But it's like, a good idea. It's a no, no, one no, star it, movie it, for me. It, it is bad. Well, maybe a good idea, but the, it's not there other than mm. a concept. But then there's a sneak movie in 2016. 16 years after the second one killed the franchise. That they just were like, hey, we're making a movie about scary woods. Just kidding. And it's just called Blair Witch. And this is not found footage. Or is, wait, is it found footage? I'm honestly trying to remember. I watched it one time, and that was I it. Never know the difference. Was that enough? But, but in this one, yes. Heather's brother. So Heather is one of the campers that footage. disappeared. Heather's brother goes into the woods to find his sister. So that the first one and three are connected stories, as if it's real. And two's like this meta one. Yes. So I mean, I don't want to waste too much time here because We've already wasted I, too much time. I love Blair Witch, but it should not have been a trilogy. And the trilogy brings down the original movie. It's a tier three. It's a tier three. Tier three. Don't watch any but the first. Now we're going to talk about Captain America. When Captain America wields his, his mighty shield. shield. Uh, this includes the first Avenger in 2011, the Winter Soldier in 2014, uh, and Civil War in 2016. Not that one that we just sang? No. Oh. Sorry. The first movie is directed by Joe Johnson, and then the lo- other two are r- the Russo Bros. And if you don't know what this is, it's basically the best part of the MCU, the best trilogy in the MCU, debatable, maybe? Mm-hmm. I mean, probably the best yes. trilogy, but it's it also is- a cheat. It, well, kind of. Because, no, because there's two Captain America movies and, and an Avengers an movie. An Avengers movie that's titled Captain America Civil War. But they are all, um, I, I think, important pivot points within the storytelling of these phases yeah. of Marvel. So obviously, like, I'm kind of sour on everything Marvel. But when I saw that first Captain America movie, I was like, oh, this is really bland. There's really nothing to this. Although Chris Evans does a great job and it's yeah. a fun character. I just wasn't won over. And then... This is one of those where the Winter Soldier came out and is among the best of, that Marvel has Still to offer. Still to this day. Right? And I, I think Civil War is pretty weak. And so for me, what? it's like this great sandwich with soggy bread. Ew. Yeah. Uh, this is one of those interesting ones because most of the time we talk about like the middle one is a high earner because the first one was a big sure. hit. Yeah. And then the, the first one is the best one and then it goes downhill. This is one of the few ones where it starts out at $371 million 
in the box office. Then the second movie, uh, Winter Soldier, goes up to seven hundred fourteen million, mm. and the third movie, Civil War, goes to one point two billion. Yeah, it also goes up in IMDb ratings as well, from a six point nine to a seven point eight. May I throw out a little, maybe a little bit of a hot take? Yeah, I think Civil War is a better movie because it is Captain America: Civil War and not Avengers: Civil War. Think about how the movie ends. It it rains all of that kind of garbage of that um, frankly oh, you ter- mean, terrible airplane scene fight. I, I hate that. It's a great fight oh, you, scene. Do you like gray no, it's, boring? It's, it's horrible. Like, it and is also, amazing. The it's ending terrible. is built on this super spy being caught on camera killing someone very important. There was really good scenes. <laughs> the worst plot hole I've ever that's seen. That's a pretty funny part. Yeah. yeah, that is terrible. But I do appreciate that it takes all of that that's going on and then it funnels it into, hey, we're just going to have it like Captain, Captain you, America. Would you say it Iron gets a, a better, not, not conclusion to Iron Man, but since Iron Man didn't get a great trilogy conclusion for himself, right. this is a good wrap up for the character yeah, we didn't in include Captain America's Iron Man, trilogy. We? Well, that's coming in a future show. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but for me, this is a tier two because I think Winter Soldier is so strong. And I like the first Avenger okay. Civil War, I am just so mild on. What about you guys? What do you give it? I actually, this squeaked in as a tier one. Okay. I like that first movie. I think it is wholesome. You mean you said, sure. you said it was yeah. nothing? I, I liked it. Uh, I was yeah. out in theaters, had a good time. Um, I was blown away by Winter Soldier. And I have to remember the first time I saw Civil War, I had a good time. Every subsequent viewing, the movie got worse and worse and worse. But I, there are moments that I like, and I, I hate that airplane fight, but I like Spider-Man a whole lot. <laughs> Joel? This is absolutely a tier one for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't hate the MCU like you two grumps. Yeah, he just uh, gave it a tier hey, one. What are you talking about? At the time, I, I think the airport fight scene is one of the, my favorite fight scenes in action movies. Uh, Have you ever seen an action movie before? Do you just yes. wear sunglasses all the time and not really see the sun? You may talk down to me. It doesn't matter because I gave it a tier <laughs> one. Because I think it's a great fight scene because of the emotions and the, the visuals. And seeing Spider-Man hop in there was so much fun. Uh, what's, more emotional? That. what's more emotional than pulled punches? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> we don't really want to hurt each other, Zach. They're friends. Yeah, wh- why is that fun? Okay, cool. I, I mean, I agree with you, but <laughs> you guys give a gift to your one. You're both arguing. I love it. Big and so. Next up, we have Back to the Future. Dun, 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 dun. Back to the Future. in five. Back to the Future Part Two in 1989. Back to the Future Part Three in 1990. All three are directed by Robert Zemeckis. These star Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, obviously. as Marty McFly and Doc Brown, and they travel through time to different periods in history and future. Listen, Bob. This this might be my top my top trilogy. I love these movies, and I don't Wait, know why. On. Even three? I don't. Why? Why, why is three, three a problem for you? Is why good? What, what's wrong with three? Three uh, is I don't get good. it. Three it's, is it's good. It's like based on a joke. To me, it's just like hey. What if he went back in time to to Western time? And it's it just like, what else is he supposed to do in a time travel movie? We went to the future. We're going to the past. That's what you do. It's I have so no dry problem with to me. Is it because it's the desert? And honestly. Two over time, weaker as a movie. No. Yeah. That is like... No, I get I lo- it. Look, when I was eight and I wanted those glasses and those shoes, I loved it. You are giving way too... That, that's not the part of two. Everyone think... When they're thinking about Back to the Future 2, all they think about is the first... The first... I don't even think it's half the movie. Yeah. Where they're in the future. And that is just basically the inciting incident for the real movie, which is going back to 1955, and which I, is fun. I, I think this, part this is the fun. movie that introduced me to the concept of like, you know, multiple timelines oh and how it's gosh, alternate realities. Right. I love it so much. And it blew I my mind. I do like when he sees his family in the future too. I just watched a deleted scene the other day where he met Dave. It, you know, you don't forget about Dave, his brother, but oh, he's, he's like a, a bum or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but no, this is a fantastic movie series, consistently high earning box office. And uh, while the first movie is the highest earner and the best on IMDb, I think this is a solid trilogy. Tier one. No problem giving this a tier one at all. I will poke a hole in three. I don't like that they're suddenly like, hey, yeah, um, Marty is easy to egg on. It just kind of comes, comes out of nowhere. Well, they, they kind of start like putting the little seeds in two. Yeah. Like, Chick, he doesn't like the word chicken. Just to yeah, they build it up to three. They, the other thing, the same jokes, the whole trilogy. That's what makes it endearing. Mm. Yeah. You I, mean like monkey movies? It's the same joke. The same jokes. Every single monkey They're movie. They're apes. <laughs> All right, Joel. <laughs> Monkeys have tails. Apes Monkeys have tails. I know. They did film two and three like at the same time they to did. the point where when two tell. ends, there's a trailer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can tell because like one is its own story and then two and three kind of come together. You don't really need two and three, but I think overall it's a great trilogy. One of the best. One of the all time best trilogies. Kent. <sighs> You know what, Joel? It's a tier one. Thank of course you. it is. Of course it is. <laughs> you, ain't, honestly, you ain't fooling anybody, kid. I know. <laughs> it's a tier one strictly on the fact that the first movie exists and the other two are fine. Yeah. I think it is decline quality, but it's like way up here and it's like slow slide. 
And I think with that second one, Mm -hmm. uh, it's not only is it the alternate timeline thing that you mentioned, Joel, which is fascinating, but I, my my mind was blown by Marty interacting around Marty. Yeah. Yeah, When you go back back in the movie, when he's trying to save himself from being hit by the bullies with his handbag. That is so clever. I I loved it as a kid. Yeah. Now we're going to move to the star Wars franchise, but Hey, hold on there today. We're just doing the prequels. Yes, prequels meaning episode one, The Phantom Menace, came out in 1999. Episode two, Attack of the Clones, which came out in 2002. And episode three, Revenge of the Sith, with which came out in 2005. Yeah. All written and directed by George Lucas, starring Hayden Christensen, Natalie Portman, and Ewan McGregor, and a lot of other people. Yeah. So this this focuses on a young Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, and yeah, Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's how, it's how Anakin Skywalker became Darth Vader. Yeah, from enemies to frenemies. Yeah. So uh, here's the thing. Uh, we we talked a lot about how this is this two really horrible Star Wars movies and like three fourths of a really good one. Isn't it amazing how time has been so kind to these how movies? How did that happen? Let us not forget, gentlemen. Let don't let what's going on in the world, what's happened over the last twenty years, mm-hmm. don't let it distract you from the fact that these aren't very good. Yeah. Now I have said time and time again, these are the worst movies that I absolutely love. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're terrible. I can, I've seen them a million times. I can show sure. them. I love them. They're not good. Yeah, and don't. Yeah, again, don't let other trilogies, other movies, and what's gone on fool you. They're bad. I mean, if we're talking about positives, right? Because we can talk about how they're kind of like ironically awesome now. But yeah. I do think the world building created in the prequel series is really cool. The concept is solid. Yeah, it's the dialogue and the acting, which mm-hmm. is so wooden. The first movie made the most. Uh, oh, Menace did it? Okay. One billion dollars. It did. And then you drip because I think they had re-releases. In okay, there yeah, that makes sense. And then you dip down to six forty-nine million for the second, and eight hundred and fifty. You go back up for eight hundred fifty million for the third. Okay, <sighs> but also a dip in quality. Like, well, <laughs> this. I don't want to say this because it's just going to strengthen Ken's ego. But on IMDb, the first one is lower rated. Yeah, that makes by sense. Eddie's. By one point. It's, it's not my ego. One. It's 6.5 <laughs> for that one and then 6.6 you know, 6 for the second movie. I'll take that and run. And then 7.6 for Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, that makes sense. So it goes up there. This but, is three-fourths of a good movie in a trilogy. Yeah. How are we feeling about that? So naturally, it should be a tier three. Yeah. It's not, though. It's a tier two. It's, it's a tier two. It's a tier two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Redemption sort of. <laughs> I I actually almost gave this a tier one because this is one of the few trilogies on our list that I own. Yeah, I own, and then you could rewatch and not be upset about it. I own it. the original trilogy and the prequels. I do not own any other Star Wars movies. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I feel like that is kind of a tier one for the prequels, though, us giving it a tier two. It's mostly just context of what is uh, to come, we'll say. Sure. But um, <laughs> can I just uh, stick a flag in the ground on something I f- firmly believe? Please. I don't like, from a marketing standpoint, that these movies were called episode one, two, and three. I don't believe in that. I don't accept that in my life, and I'd never call them that. They are Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith, and I will never deviate from that. Because don't come at me and say, episode four... It's Star Wars. I call, oh, yeah. I call Maybe it, it's a new I call hope. it a new hope. Sure, it's Star Wars. It's Empire Strikes Back. If I say Star Wars, I'm referring Jedi. to Star Wars A New right. Hope. So I personally don't accept episode one, two, or three in my life. And I am that guy who You're subtly, dying on that I hill? subtly correct people when they're having a conversation about it. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, episode one, it's like, oh, I really appreciated Phantom Menace when he did this. Uh, also, Phantom Menace, one of the worst titles ever. Just putting it out You there. guys have seen that video, by the way, where yeah. like, all the Star Wars movies are mistitled. Uh-huh. And then he guy puts them on the right title. Yeah. And it's like, oh my gosh, that works so well. Yeah, George Lucas, did, he didn't know it's what he was like doing. It's like it wasn't thought through. Right. <laughs> oh, crazy. <laughs> Next. Tier two. Now, oh, wow. Okay. Um, Whiplash here. We have Madagascar. You like to move it, move it? Indeed. So this came out in 2005 with Madagascar. 2008 for Madagascar Escape to Africa. And Madagascar 3, Europe's Most Wanted, came out in 2012. So they get off the island and they join the circus in number three? Listen, they, the first like, movie is pretty fun and the sequels are garbage. Uh, so this stars Ben Stiller, Chris Rock, David Schwimmer, Sasha Baron Cohen. And, you know, someone that I'm not supposed to talk about because it's Will Smith's wife. Anyways, uh, there's also apparently... Put her name back in your mouth, Ken. <laughs> there's also apparently a Penguins of Madagascar movie. A little spinoff there. And, well, I don't know about a movie, but there at the very least was a Nickelodeon TV show. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the first movie is fine. I never liked the animation style. I didn't even really It's a like bizarre the story. style, for sure. Very yeah. angular. Yes. Um, I also think that... Which is definitely none of us. No, not at all. <laughs> I, I also think some of the humor doesn't really land for me, specifically with Chris Rock. They're all I, neurotic, I essentially. I, I'm giving this a tier three. I don't like these movies. I'll never watch them. I won't own them. Easily a tier three. Joel? Tier two. What? what? Tell me more. 
I gave it a tier two yeah, because I did like the first Madagascar a lot. The, the second one was fine. Like, third one, bleh. But at the same time, this is one of those that if my kids wanted to watch it, I am not like, oh, no, I don't want to sure. watch that. If they put but it of on, all the DreamWorks movies to watch, this is bottom of the barrel right there. I also like King Julian. Yeah, you do. I think King Julian is quite entertaining. Yeah. Okay. And so that's it, it, this. This isn't a high tier two because those don't exist. <laughs> but it. it was so it's a, a low tier two. It okay. was a low tier two. But those don't exist either. So, yeah. All right. Uh, begrudgingly, because I don't believe in this choice. This is Dumb and Dumber. Which includes Dumb and Dumber in 1984, Dumb and Dumberer when Harry met Lloyd in 2003, and Dumb and Dumber 2, T-S-T-O, in 2014. So, so the, we, yeah, we've got a, a movie and then a prequel and then a sequel. Yes, and the uh, the movie and but the, all with the, the same two characters, Zach. That's true. Right. How does that not fit? It's not, it's the bookends were directed arc. by the Farrelly brothers, and I think the third one is directed by a Farrelly brother after he won an Oscar for Green Book. <laughs> and came back for Dumb and Dumber too, maybe. And so we have Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels, and then played in the prequel by Derek Richardson and Eric Christian Olsen. Did they do you a, see a, this movie? They do a shockingly good impersonation. And, impression? Yeah, what? yeah, impersonator is hey, what by the we way, call it now. Kent, what's Harry's last name? Dunn. How do you spell that? D U N N E, I believe. Right, there's E on there. So you're yeah, safe. So you're safe. good. Yeah. And Lloyd Christmas. Uh, this Dumb and Dumber, I still will say it is one of the funniest movies ever made. And then I watched Dumb you and Dumber. You could argue it is the funniest movie ever made. You could, argue, you, you could argue it was a comedy of comedy. I would never yeah. argue that. But uh, Dumb and Dumber, when Harry met Lloyd, I remember watching that and being like, this is terrible. Mm-hmm. And then I watched Dumb and Dumber 2, and I was like, this isn't much better than the other one. And isn't it annoying when uh, when Lloyd Christmas pops up in Community all the time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I hate that guy. I was gonna mention, <laughs> Hi, hey, how are you? I was going to mention his defining trait physically, but I, I'm not going to mention that here on Bacon. No, it's, yeah. all, it's all good. It's here for the Community episode? Yeah, yeah, it's so funny. But yeah, yeah, Dumb and Dumber definitely the highest earning here, the highest rated here, and I'm giving this trilogy a tier three because comedy trilogies almost impossible to pull off. So for you, even if it has a really strong one movie, that's not enough to carry the trilogy. No, because um, it's a movie versus a trilogy, right? Like if it if it needed to be a trilogy, you know, make it a trilogy. Yeah. When it doesn't, and you stretch it out like that, you ruin the brand. Yeah. This is never good to start with. Tier three. It's not a trilogy, but I also give it a tier three. Right now we have Beverly Hills Cop. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, do you guys remember anything about Beverly Hills Cop? I remember the first oh, one. Yeah. Uh, did you know they're getting a fourth one? Oh, that's yeah. Fine. Beverly Hills Cop Axel F is coming out later this year. That's why we're trying to get it in before this episode, before it becomes a non-trilogy. Uh-huh. So we don't have an asterisk on this one yet, but this includes Beverly Hills Cop in 1987 and Beverly Hills Cop 3 in 1994. Here's what's pretty cool about the series. So the first one is kind of, a, I don't know if it was a sneak success or if it was just capitalizing on the success of Eddie Murphy. It's kind of a perfect vehicle for him, mm-hmm. but it's directed by Martin Brest. And then the second movie, directed by Tony Scott. Yep. Third movie, John Landis. These are big names. These are big names. Uh, but it's about a street smart Detroit cop who travels to Beverly Hills, California to investigate a crime, even though it's out of his jurisdiction mm-hmm. for the first movie. Uh, I must uh, I must tell the truth here. I get Beverly Hills Cop mixed up with 48 Hours. I thought uh, you're everyone say, does. I thought you were going to say Beverly Hills Ninja. <laughs> Except for Nick Nolte is not in Beverly Hills Nick, Cop. It's Nick Judge Nolte Reinhold. is... Uh, I, yeah. do, I like, do I like 48 Hours better? No. I don't. You, uh, you don't know anything about it. Who remembers no, anything about it? There is a decline in box office earnings, IMD ratings, and my personal ratings on this movie because the first one is the best. Yeah. And they get worse as it goes along, especially when Eddie Murphy decided he wanted to be more serious mm-hmm. in his role. Right. And kind of didn't want to do the silly stuff anymore. And it kind of killed the franchise. So we'll see how the fourth one goes. This is a tier three for me. Great theme song. Mediocre Harold, series. Harold Faltermeyer, yeah, who did uh, Top Gun, yeah, as well, and Fletch. Yeah, this is and a tier Fletch. three easily. Uh, tier, yeah, tier one theme, uh, tier three trilogy. Yeah, but uh, I mean, if you want to watch the first one, it's worth a watch. It's it's fun mm-hmm. to see. Yeah, and now we have the Dark Knight trilogy. All right. So you're okay with this, right? This is no asterisk or anything, this like, is, right? This is a trilogy of movies. This in that is beginning, middle, end. The Batman begins in 2005. The Dark Knight in 2008. The Dark Knight Rises in 2012, and in none of those movies is he wearing hockey pads. <laughs> I'm not wearing hockey pads. Written and directed by Christopher Nolan, starring Christian Bell, Morgan Freeman, Gary Oldman, Gillian Murphy, and Heath Ledger, Tom Hardy, Aaron Eckhart, pretty much everybody. Yeah. Every guy that Christopher Nolan likes to work with. Yep. Now, there's the weird thing about it is these go up. Like, it starts with uh, Batman Begins sure. only made $373 million. Because it, it, only. you remember why? Because none of us believed in Batman, Batman as a franchise. And, Batman and Robin happened. 
yeah. and then all of a sudden we're like oh nolan he made like a indie movie that maybe i've seen memento yeah. or something like that and then you see this origin movie that could have been a standalone if this is the only batman movie he did it was great it'd be an incredible movie but then you get the next one which made one billion dollars <laughs> from 373 million to one billion yeah in and 2008 then, by the way yeah and then you get the dark knight rises which made 1.1 1. 1 billion so yeah. it's just an upward scale there um, it and peaks in the middle for IMDb ratings, Dark Knight being the highest. And frankly, Dark Knight Rises would have made a lot more money. But there was some tragedy surrounding the release oh, yeah. in theaters. And I so, forgot about truly, that. yeah, there actually w- would have made even more. Yeah. And I think this one works so well as a trilogy. I, it's a, easily a tier one trilogy, maybe for us all, because the, the first one, it's, it's a good origin. The second one amps up the hero's journey, makes him question his place in the world. And the third one, it wraps around to the first movie, which I think any great trilogy does. Sure, there's disappointment with the third one, right? There it's, is. it's complicated. It's messy. Sloppy even. There's gigantic plot, plot holes. But, but what it does is it brings you back to Batman Begins and you say, oh, that's a great picture. And it completes the story. This, this is a complete arc. This is one where Chris Nolan said, I'm making three movies and then I'm done. Uh-huh. And I, I, I respect that. Yeah. That you can close off a story. But at the same time, this isn't a spoiler alert, I guess, for 2012. But I didn't want to see Batman retire. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he, like even, he doesn't do much Batmaning at all in Dark Knight Rises. It's actually his job. Yeah. <laughs> Batmaning. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I, I'm not going to beat around the bush. This is a tier one for me, but there is some, a little bit of puttering out for Dark Knight sure. Rises for me. Yeah. But I, all these movies are good though. All these movies. Puttering are good. out like the death scene for Marianne Cotillard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's just terrible. Um, I've, I've said this before and you can take it. So this is kind of bad grammar, but you can take it either way. I like the Dark Knight Rises more than most people. Yeah. I like it more than most people uh, like what? it. It ages pretty well. And I like it more than I like most people. I, I know. Um, I like <laughs> Me? I like Hold me. on, Zach. Me. <clears throat> so I think that this movie oh. is, is, is uh, if, if this is the weak point, if The Dark Knight Rises is the weak point, you're doing really well yeah. with your trilogy. And I, think, right. it, I mean, I don't want to say this because Kent might get a little fiery eyes. It's like the Game of Thrones where it's like you get served up these amazing, awesome movies for the first two, and then you get a good movie, the last one, and it feels disappointing by comparison. Yeah, it's somehow disappointing, mm-hmm. but really, it is quite good. So um, good. It just, what could live up to that that second movie? I just can't get behind a bad guy that uses, like, you know, Novocaine, and that's, that's you know, for the soul. His crutch. Mm-hmm. Before uh, he sputters up. <laughs> Did you, you're overthinking it. Tier one, obviously, it's a yeah, tier one. Tier yes, one. no obviously question. Obviously, it's a great It's among the best They're of the best. Great. Another trilogy that I own, and I will watch any I've, I've watched many times. I will watch many times. Love them. Now we have the Terminator. Terminator. Oh boy, this has got a big asterisk next to it. Yeah, <laughs> but I do think that there's a trilogy it in makes there sense. somewhere. Because you have the Terminator 1984, Terminator 2 Judgment Day 1981, and Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines in 2003. And then you have Terminator Salvation, Terminator Genesis, and Terminator Dark Fate. It's, it's Genesis. Genesis. Whew, so the Terminator Sega Genesis is what you're saying? <laughs> Sega. They were roommates. Sega. <laughs> <laughs> so this is directed by James Cameron for the first two. Then Jonathan Mostow took over for the third one. And this is where you're getting the change in vision, I think. Because yeah. the first at one, some point you see it kind of looks like Edward Furlong. And then your vision changes and he looks like Christian Bale. And then your vision changes and it looks like Jason Clark. Yeah, Nick Stahl or yeah. whatever. So in the first one, you have this horror film. So you have uh, Disguised as a Human, a cyborg assassin tra- travels from 2029. 20, guys, coming up pretty quick. To kill Sarah Connor. Honor. And then later, this ter- the same Terminator switches sides to defend her son. And those first two movies are impeccable. The first one, without the second one, may not be as strong, right? Because it's kind of a mm-hmm. it's a cool thriller. I can see that. But then the second one comes comes around. But here's where I may kind of defend the third one. I think it suffers from sequelitis because it feels like the second movie. And that's when we have a female Terminator with a red leather jacket. Yeah. Right. And so it's kind of like, oh, it's it's just another chase. Whereas I think those first two movies did it a little differently. Mm-hmm. But it's the end of the third movie that wraps up the story in a like a chilling but great way that makes it a full trilogy for me. OK, because the the prophecy all comes connected. The third movie is not n- near the level of no. the other two. No, but it's not that bad, especially I guess maybe it's a Star Wars prequel thing, especially considering all the recent movies like mm-hmm. three is fine yeah it's fine well, and this this definitely peaks in the middle for both box office and at imdb ratings because terminator 2 is just beloved sure but i think people a lot of times forget that terminator 3 even exists like you got terminator 1 and terminator 2 and that's like the what's you no know, a, a couple i don't know what you call a trilogy this is two movies do a duology 
Duology. Well, I'm just making that up. Twins. That's, that's, Twins. That's a, <laughs> uh, that's a double pro, twins. Pro Jam album, right? Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, there's uh, the scene in the uh, the the people where there are headstones. The place. The what is that called? Cemetery. <laughs> the the scene in the cemetery. So you forgot the word for cemetery. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> the place where dead people are in the ground. <laughs> that place. They're not. De- they're not yeah. sleeping. That scene's kind of cool. And I also remember seeing a lot of coverage of this movie, watching G4 TV for gamers. Because there was a video game tie-in, but but and you, it was bad. But you remember, like when the nukes are going off and they can't stop them, and that's a judgment tape. It gets. It's just so cool. Spoiler alert: It's cool. The ending of this movie is cool. But what are you giving it? Tier one for the that's trilogy. That's two incredibly strong movies and a good movie. One, yeah, it's it's um, two amazing all timers and one movie worth defending. It's a tier one. Oh my gosh, you guys! How are we giving this all a tier one? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not a good thing. I was hoping one of you guys would bash it down because no, it's good. this is not a great trilogy. It is a great yes, two it movies is. with a good third movie. Yeah, those no, movies are so uh, good that they good, ca- they carry it. Good is a stretch. It's an okay third movie, but then you, it's not even a trilogy because there's all these other Stop movies it. after Stop it. it. They try to rewrite the timeline. And it's there's bad. all these other movies after it. I wanted one of you to at least bring that up. There's like you know twelve of these movies oh. at a TV series and it weakened the brand. Actually, a TV series is great. <sighs> I've actually, I mean, you know, I'll just watch the movies. That's yeah. fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now we have the Indiana Jones trilogy. With an asterisk. An asterisk. Raiders of the Lost Ark in 1981, Temple of Doom in 1984. Actually, I should say, it's just Raiders of the Lost Ark in the first movie. And Thank then you. it's Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom in 1984, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade in 1989, and then you get Indiana Jones and Kingdom Skull and Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny. No, you don't. Zach, why is it when I see an asterisk, I just think Barry Bonds? Because <laughs> sports humor, because much like Indiana Jones, Barry Bonds was great, and we're just gonna let it slide. Oh, okay, let it slide. <laughs> yep. So this stars Harrison Ford, River Phoenix, uh, John Reese Davis, Karen Allen, Ki Hu Kwan, um, Sean Connery, Sean Connery. Yes, of course. This is Doctor. Hen- uh, what is his full name? Doctor Henry Doctor. Indiana Jones and Henry Jones Jr. Jr. Henry Jones Jr. The dog's name was and Indiana. Indiana. He's, he's, a dog Indiana. he's a fictional archaeologist. If you don't know that, but. This, I think this counts as a trilogy because the other two were made as afterthoughts. They are serials. Well, literally in the last crusade, you have the main characters right off into the sunset. Mm-hmm. And that was like, ah, this is how it ends. So when Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out, we we're like, well, this is, this isn't uh, like what I want. I don't want yeah. more. The last crusade made the most money here. Uh, Raiders is the highest rated on IMDb. I love this trilogy. It's a Listen, tier one. If this is like a, the, all these are sandwiches, right? The meat, it's day old. Right, um, it's still fine. No, it is. It's turkey, good. but it's like, which is better? It's, it's just okay turkey, but which the bread is better is homemade. It's from Europe. It's amazing bread. <laughs> which is but better? But the turkey Kent. is day old. Terminator Three: Rise of the Machines or Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? Temple of Doom is better than than Rise of the Machines. Absolutely, yeah. it is. Don't, but don't make me compare two mediocre movies. Temple, 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 Temple of Doom is not Joel, mediocre. It's good. Joel, Temple of Doom or Dark Knight Rises? Temple of Doom. Oh, Dark wow. Knight Rises yeah. easily. No way. I like Temple of Doom. I this is the long show altogether. Just dark side. <laughs> yeah. It grew on me. Uh, but I really do like Temple of Doom. This is absolutely a tier one. One of the best trilogies. Raiders or Last Crusade? Now that's a Last Crusade's more topic. fun. I think Raiders has a tighter script. Last Crusade is such a satisfying movie. It's so fun. It's so fun. I, I don't believe this is a trilogy. I don't think this follows trilogy rules. This is not a continuous story. These are serials. These are individualized stories that can be watched out of order. And this is an amazing franchise in a tier one. Technically, Temple of Doom is a prequel. It is. Yeah, why do they do that? I don't know. Because, because they're, they're serials. Why do they do the Angels and Demons thing? Because they wanted to make James Bond. <laughs> 20 years before Angels and Demons. They wanted to make James Bond. And the order doesn't matter. Yeah. It's a tier one. It's easy. A, it's easy tier one. It would be insane to do otherwise. This one, Kingsman, the Kingsman franchise. Yes, because you have the Kingsman Secret Service in 2015, mm-hmm. Kingsman Golden Circle in 2017, mm-hmm. and the Kingsman in 2021. So the Golden Circle is a direct sequel to the first movie, and the Kingsman is a prequel. Yes, yes. showing how the organization was making. It's all about the missions of the uh, uh, Kingsman, a fictional Secret Service organization. Once upon a time, Matthew Vaughn was a really cool director that everyone was excited for. Discount Guy Ritchie? Yeah, but he made a movie called Kick Arse. Yes, he did. And then Kingsman, <laughs> The Secret Service, which was a Bond send-up that wasn't Austin Powers, right? It took itself a little seriously, but it was but kind of edgy the at the top. same time, right? Yeah. A movie so good it overcame Samuel L. Jackson's terrible uh, voice in that movie. Yeah. He lisp. He has lisp in that one. And it was so fun, so shocking. And then they made The Golden Circle, which was like, hey, people like the shock value. Double down. Triple yeah. down, whatever, yeah. and then honestly, the King's Man was was the King's Man is more of an afterthought to it all. It is not. I did not like the King's Man. 
Like okay, I'll like see. you didn't? Did you hate it? Yeah, I kind of did, did hate it. Okay. I kind of did. I thought Secret Kingsman: The Secret Service was so much fun and came out of nowhere. It was a mm-hmm. huge surprise. Really, really enjoyed that one. So in Golden Circle, I was like, "Oh, good, this is going to be great." It wasn't great. And then I watched Kingsman, and be like, "Well, maybe they get going to right their wrongs and do it better." And they didn't. It was it was the most dull and boring fight scenes and and story. Like it was just dull, and I did not appreciate it. Although the the scene with Mark Strong singing Country Roads, Take Me Home in the Golden Circle, it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it has moments, but nothing as good as the first one. I'm giving this a tier three. It just eked out a tier three for me. It, it was right on the cusp and it did get a tier two for me. You because a tier two. I think the first movie is so strong. I don't like the other ones, but I think there are scenes in the Golden Circle that are fun, but I don't, I probably never watched the movie again. So what? it's coasting... On one and a half movies. And I definitely had to clear play these. These are Oh, for sure. These, Absolutely. Are, these are very over the top violence and, and language and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Zach? I'm pretty sure there are eight trilogies on this list that I like worse than this one. I think. That you so, wait, that you hold like, on, that worse. You like worse. <laughs> worse. I'm <laughs> top, bottom, top bottom. Double negative I triple. Think that there are eight franchises I like less than this one. And therefore this is the lowest of tier two. Right there me. with you. Mm. So tier two. But barely. Next up, we have the Naked Gun. These are confusingly numbered. It's like the Xbox franchise. Intentionally so. You get the Naked Gun from the Files of the Police Squad in 1988. The Naked Gun 2 and a half, The Smell of Fear in 1991. And Naked Gun 33 and a third, The Final Insult in 1994. Directed by David Zucker for first two. And then Peter Siegel for the last one. Yeah. These star Leslie Nielsen and Priscilla Presley. And, you know, some It's the story people. of Frank Drebin. He's a, he's a cop with a big heart and a small brain. <laughs> These are these are very much send ups of police dramas of the time. It yeah. became a spin off of a, a TV series called Police Squad, canceled way before its time. And this is just ridiculous humor the entire time and may have formed either this was exactly what my sense of humor was at the time or it formed my sense of humor. The first two are consistently funny or were yes. consistently funny. Yes. I don't remember liking three very much at all. No, 33 third is not not good right compared to the other two the the number t- number two is like peak comedy for me two and a half is it yes that is hilarious and then you get number one which is a solid solid comedy these are so ridiculous and so funny and i thought priscilla presley was so beautiful she was and uh yeah this is a, a tier two for me oh i thought it was gonna be tier one yeah i was it is almost tier one but that 33 and a third the final insult really is like no it's the the franchise although bad. i did watch the first one for comedy of comedy bracket i don't ever want to go back and watch these but they're still funny i remember laughing a lot so it's tier two okay zach i like this franchise better than the kingsman franchise so i guess that makes it a tier two <laughs> that's so your skill now you like less more movies more or less like yes than this you more uh, or less like this one less i don't <laughs> I don't know. I, I know I've seen them all. I don't really remember the third one much. Um, that first one is great. And the second one, I think, is fine. So there you go. Tier two. Okay. Really just rave reviews from a very intelligent human being. Now now we have Taken. You. Taken. Uh, we have Taken in 2008, Taken 2 in 2012, and Taken 3 in 2014. Where'd you take them to? No. What? <laughs> uh, so the overall synopsis, a retired CIA operative named Brian Mills has to stop people from being taken. <laughs> this movie's such a meme. <sighs> this so movie, it's this not trilogy. even a real franchise. The, the first is directed by Pierre Morel, and the second and third, guys, I'm changing my name officially. I'm going to spend the money and change my name to the director of two and three, Olivier Megaton. Yep. Megaton? Um, Megaton. Me- not Olivier even Megatron. Megaton. Megaton. I thought it was Megatron when I first read it. Yeah. That's also awesome. Uh, so Taken 1 came, came out of nowhere. Yeah. Started this uh, older vigilante era, yeah. right? And it was so cool. It actually it, is really. It felt a, like a grim movie that we could all watch, movie. right? It's, it's a worse transporter. A no, worse transporter. It's much better transporter. Save for it's our other episode where we maybe Listen, tier transporters. The, the scene where transporter has the bike pe- pedals pedals on, on the oil, you know. But it's it's cool. Actually, how it's many, a horrible movie. How many car chases are in taken? Not enough. <laughs> How many cuts are in Taken? Far too many. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Taken three is a freaking okay, joke. Well, the Taken, um, aside from that, the fact that uh, take that first Taken movie, I don't know. I guess the other ones have uh, Shannon from Lost, who I hate, Maggie Grace, um, and Famke Jensen. Well, I don't hate her though. That's fine. Uh, Zinnia on top. That, that first one. Zinnia on top. Should marry Olivia Megaton. <laughs> <laughs> the I the, the first movie is like wow. Is Liam Neeson a legit action star? This is kind of cool. And, and then, then he it, never stopped. Oh boy. This is a prime 
prime example of why you don't force a sequel. Because mm-hmm. the first movie was like, oh, this dad, his daughter got taken. He's totally going to like kick some butt and, and do a good job at it. And then you get the second movie. It's like, oh, by the way, here's another bad guy. And it's, you know, we get kidnapped, kidnapping stuff again. Yeah. And the third movie is like, and here's another one. It's the worst luck ever. Okay. How about this? Um, Chris Hemsworth extraction movies are now the better taken. How's that? I no? think we're all kind of disappointed by two, though. Okay, fine. I think it's following the same I'm, I'm formula. Two is, the, two is the highest earning one here, and number one is the highest IMDb rated. Okay. okay. I don't like these. I don't know if you can tell. But the thing is, they've been memed to death at this point. I don't even... They're not real movies. They mm-hmm. are just ideas. I don't know who saw these. I don't think anybody's watching these. Tier three. Okay. I these see. are... Yeah. Tier three as well for me. These are $5 dad movies at Walmart. When that was a thing, that's probably not a thing anymore. You could buy the Remember triple set. Remember $5 bins yeah, right. at Walmart, This is, this is easily tier three. Let me agree. And I uh, hope Brian Mills does not give us a call. He has a special set of skills. Not anymore, he does Climbing fences. Now I'm just trying to think of movies that are better than Taken. There's a lot. <laughs> I prefer playing Tekken than watching Taken. Oh, Tekken, great. Tekken, Tekken 3. 3. Oh, so good. Specifically, Tekken 3, so good. Save for our video game trilogy show. Hey, I gotta, I gotta give Taken credit. They didn't get weirdo with the titles. It's like Taken 2. Yeah. Taken to not tooken or was taken T- talked to freaking T- take have taken toke to relax to taken stop now we have taken in Canada it's took next up is Mad Max with a big old asterisk big asterisk we're specifically talking about Mad Max Road Warrior and Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome yes which came out in 1979 1981 and 1985 but then we had Mad Max Fury Road in 2015 and Furiosa in 2020. Fury Road is more of a Furiosa movie okay putting it right out yeah, there so the are... Mad Max story was told Mm-mm, that's bait no oh, stop it although we are going to get by the way we're going to get another Mad Max movie we should get another Furiosa movie and have the Furiosa trilogy if you don't know what it's about, it follows Max, initially a police officer in the future in Australia, uh, but there's a societal collapse and Guzzling. everything. Yeah, everything's like <laughs> everything is gone except for lots of gas, apparently. And water. Yeah. Six. They so don't have a lot of water. Of water. Yeah. yeah. So this is directed by George Miller, who did all these movies mm-hmm. and Babe Pig in the City that, uh, that, the, and, and Happy Feet. Yeah. That first movie is so confusing because it's like, oh, that's kind of real life. Yeah. And then it goes uh, so far off the road. I like that movie more than you guys. I see it as a early 80s grindhouse thriller. Okay. Right? And it's it's cut, it's low budget because it's Australian and it's low budget. He added this thing in like like a trailer, right? This is a movie that honestly should not have had a sequel. What do they call trailers in Australia? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. I have no idea. Trailer. Trailer. <laughs> Sheila in the trailer. Trailer. Uh, but then he made The Road Warrior, which, which is, is awesome. Fantastic. It's so good. <laughs> It is, but I actually earned less so, than the other it's two. It's so dumb. I love it. It's great. It's so good. Yeah. It, no, I've said this before, but the Mad Max trilogy is like every other one is good. Like one is bad. Two mm-hmm. is good. Three is bad. Four is good. And you only got the two. You're, you got a bad or a good middle with like a bad sandwich around it. Yeah. The, it, you're catching the vision. This is uh, similar. It's like to, Vegemite in the middle there. Oh, similar to the Star Wars situation where like the, what happens after colors the past I think I like Fury Road so much that I, I even can watch Thunderdome and be like, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's got a good song. <laughs> we don't need another hero. <laughs> Guys, this is tier two for me. I said I said Vegemite in the middle, but that's definitely not the case. Vegemite's yeah, no, Vegemite outside. would it's be like on the outside. Yeah, it's like <laughs> place a bread in the middle of Vegemite <laughs> on the top and bottom. Why'd you put Vegemite on both sides of your bread? <laughs> See, and you're putting your hands on the Vegemite? That's never trailer. coming off. Vegemite fingies. Eat, uh, it. Eat the Vegemite in the trailer. Uh, trailer. Yeah. Vegemite. You have a tier two? Yeah, tier two. Really? I smile on this series. Oh, I'll give it a tier two. I give, I it, give, it, a, it, I give it tier three. I give it tier oh, two on Road Warrior alone. You hate Vegemite. I do hate Vegemite. Me too. <laughs> Marmite, Vegemite, no Joel. <laughs> if it's anywhere in sight. Yeah. Did you just Marmite, rhyme? Vegemite, anywhere in sight. Did you just write the hit of the summer? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Call Taylor Swift. Oh, she stole my song again. Now we have the How to Train Your Dragon trilogy, which came out. The first one came out in 2010. Then you have How to Train Your Dragon Two and How to Train Your Dragon: The Hidden World, because they didn't want to say three in 2019. This is directed by Dean DeBlois. Dean DeBlois. <laughs> Dean DeBlois. <laughs> and Chris Sanders. So that's, that's what it's like when I Bl- pronounce. Yeah, it, I know. So. As star, starring voice by Jade Baruchel, Gerard Butler, Kate Blanchett. It Craig primarily Ferguson. follows the adventures of a young Viking named Hiccup. And uh, he's a Viking on a place where there's dragons that attack and they learn to be friends. So you guys remember when Hollywood was like, hey, guys, Jay Baruchel, not kidding. He's great. 
And then he was in everything for a minute. Yeah, he was because he is great. But he also get Gerard Butler, Craig Ferguson, Jonah Hill, Kristen Wiig, Kate Blanchett. Dear How to Train Your Dragon. I can't love this movie so much. How I love thee. Let me count the ways. You art. Thou art. You art. His You're the perfect great. trilogy. You're the perfect trilogy. This to me is... <laughs> Everything the a trilogy should be trilogy? the perfect trilogy because yeah, the first movie that kind of comes out of nowhere, DreamWorks has spots. We've talked about better trilogies already. On Listen, this it has. Mm, mm. I don't think you get better than this one. This by, by the by the full definition of what a trilogy can be, and and in the movies building upon themselves. Yes, like, and there's growth. I get that, and there's years that pass, and there's an ending that changes the story. And Hiccup gets a beard. Yeah, he, so well, much evolution. I mean, I appreciate an animated trilogy where the characters age. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. kind of nice. Looking at you, Incredibles, and, and yep. it's characters that you fall in love with. Uh, Toothless the dragon came out of nowhere, just win our hearts. How is Toothless both everybody's cat and everybody's dog? Oh. It's adorable. Uh, peaks in the middle here, box office wise, with six hundred twenty-two million. But the first one got the best ratings with an eight point one, mm-hmm. and it kind of slid down after that into the sevens. I think it was a simple matter of surprise. I think that the movie was not supposed to be good. Um, and people, uh, frankly, think about DreamWorks. Was this in the, the era of Shrek Four? Probably this was post Shrek Three. Okay, so really, there was you had DreamWorks Animation that basically had a hit with Shrek and Shrek Two, and that's it. Right, it was Madagascar. Like, yeah, Madagascar was fine. Shark Tale was not good. Ooh. Shrek Three was bad. Like you yeah. had a lot of mediocre movies, and then this story was kind of not anything to write home about, and so it shouldn't have been good. But it came together to be this magical, whimsical thing with a beautiful score. <laughs> The teariest of ones. The teariest of ones? High T, for sure. <laughs> High T for Toothless. Zach, what about you? Um, I'm also going to give this a tier one. How did this I know? Is, this, I, love, I, know? I love these movies. They are consistently of high quality, and um, they are absolutely movies that if the children pick them, I'm thrilled to sit down and watch. Mm-hmm. Like me in Madagascar. Y- yeah. Because I basically put them on the same plate. V- um, oh. Uh, except for this yeah. one's a tier one. And oh, thank tier you. Two. No, I, I, I do not just love these. messing with Yeah, I know. Seriously. I like hold my breath while he talks. No, I, do not, I do not love the How to Train Your Dragon sure. franchise. I agree. It is an absolutely solid franchise and consistent. Mm-hmm. I like the consistency of these movies where they're all just good. I like them all. Okay. I don't love them as much. Mm-hmm. But sure. they ha- I'll say this too, Kent. I've uh, been watching them a little more with my, my kids like multiple times. Yeah. They're grown on me a little. Okay. So we'll see. I may need to re-rank them later, but I was like, you know what? I do like that joke. I do like that character. And like you guys said, I like the growth of the characters. All of them, not and just how they, Hiccup. how they move the story forward mm-hmm. instead of just kind of staying in that, you know, constant right. area. And you know what it is that the, the franchise is growing on me now because I'm not seeing it through Hiccup's eyes. I'm seeing it through Stoic's eyes. And then it makes me... Stoic being his dad. Even more emotional. And I have to question myself as a father yeah. and my expectations for my son. <laughs> um, I also just... Kent and I both... We saw this movie together for the first time at the critic screening. Mm-hmm. And it was hilarious because we were both like sitting there watching this movie going, uh, we're just two dudes at an animated movie crying right now. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. I have with Kent and I in the My Little Pony movie, too. Yeah, that's true. Now we have the Hobbit trilogy. The Hobbit. The Hobbit. So not Lord of the Rings. We have other episodes to do, Joel. Right. But we're saying we're talking about An Unexpected Journey, which came out in 2012, Desolation of Smog, which came out in 2013, and Battle of the Five Armies, which came out in 2014. Those are the ones. Directed by Peter Jackson, starring Martin Freeman, Ian McKellen, Richard Armitage, and many others. Should we give this one an asterisk because it should be one movie? It should be one movie, but it's not. It's but it is, it, according to your rules, it is a, a, it, sol- a trilogy. It, it is a trilogy. It is more of a trilogy than Indiana Jones, in my opinion. <laughs> so a well-mannered hobbit named Bilbo Baggins embarks upon a journey to take back a kingdom, a very important jewel, with 12 dwarves and a wizard named Gandalf. Name the all the dwarves, Kent. <sighs> Bofur, Keely, Feely, Thor and Oakenshield. Uh, no, don't make me do dog. this. Don't make me uh, do this. No, but you get Martin Freeman in this, Ian McKellen, Bill Fur- Kate <laughs> Evangeline Lilly, Better Cumber Patch, and all directed, all three movies directed by Peter Jackson. Listen, Martin Freeman's very good. I am actually currently rewatching these. I am shocked by how much these all earned. The first one got a billion dollars, and yeah. I was like, okay, excitement of Lord of the Rings, I get it. The second one made $959 million, and the third one made $962 million. They were all pushing a billion dollars. But they're not that good. They're not that good. But are they not that good because we're comparing them to the Lord of the Rings? No, truly, it's it's a lot of filler. Oh, yeah. And, and I love Peter Jackson, and I love his extended cuts, and I bought the extended cuts. Of The right? Hobbit? Yes, I did. Wow. And it's honestly, I think it's like 10 hours 
of content. And I'm okay with that. I love Smaug so much as a character. Wow. And, uh, hmm. That's, yes. Oh, the Smaug scene, the, the end of that second movie where they're just chit chatting in the gold. Oh, I'm all about so it. So good. Well, it's such a good yeah. part of the book, too. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is the rest of the CG. So I'm watching this the other day. I'm like, this is too shiny. There it's, is a weird gloss on this. The gold has shine. It's, yeah. the, it's the running up the falling bricks. Yeah. Weirdness that is all throughout the and franchise. It, and it's something that he just forgot that he perfected with practical art yeah, go, in the first series. All of them going down the water in that first movie. Mm-hmm. Well, and well, I do appreciate when movies can tie together in the same universe. If they are in the same universe, I felt like shoehorning in uh, yep. Legolas. Legolas. Uh, I just kind of went, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, yeah, it kind of pulled Angel- me out of the movie. Lily. Yeah. I don't think any of the movies are bad. I think they're fine. But like, I'm, it's like, fine. It's a tier two for me because I like all of them. I own them. I'm just like, I would way rather watch Lord of the Rings than these movies. I saw the first two in theaters mm-hmm. because of the, the, the girl I was dating at the time, um, her work for Christmas said, hey, we're going to take everybody out to see... Uh, the Hobbit. So we saw the first two movies, and then for the third movie, she got laid off. So I never saw it in theaters. Oh, I didn't see it for like <laughs> you're like I could pay to see it, yeah. but it's not free. I didn't see it for like six years after that. I was like, Dang <laughs> and it! And it's the worst one. So yeah, and it was not worth it. I should have stopped no. it too. Yeah, I am giving this a tier two as well. Okay, mediocre. Sure, mediocre all around. I'm giving it a tier two. Now we have the Bill and Ted trilogy, which includes Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure in 1989, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey in 1991, and Bill and Ted Face the Music in Jump Forward 2020. Directed by three different people, but starring Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter. Remember mm-hmm. that movie? Yeah, oh, we all we watched did, that we together. We did a bit on it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mid-pandemic, it was yeah. adorable. So we formed our company. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but uh, here we have uh, the first one being the highest box office. The first one being the highest box office earner as well as the highest IMDb rating, but it is like a 6.9 IMDb. So Mm. it's got some dumb humor in it that people might like because it's about two metalhead slackers, it calls them here, uh, traveling through time and beyond while trying to fulfill their destiny to establish a utopian society in the universe with their music. I've never been a bogus journey guy. What? No. Not even when you were a kid and you didn't know any better? It is definitely geared toward kids. I'm an excellent adventure fan. Yeah. Oh, excellent adventure. Excellent adventure is great. Holds up, honestly. Um, Bogus Journey, no. And that cash grab in 2020 was not good. No. I, I, Bill and his excellent adventure, I do give like a perfect score to on my thing because I love that one. Right. And I have have a nostalgia score for (laughs) Bogus Journey because it's silly. It's so silly. You know what it is. But at the same time, I really enjoy it. And the song at the end, I love it. Yeah. The song's de- good. Death is great. Death is great. We should yeah. clarify, Death is a character. Death is a Hey, guys, Death is great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I saw him first in Rocket Man, but that's fine. Uh-huh. He was good yeah. in that movie, too. Yeah. Um, Wait, which, which one? Which Rocket Man movie? Uh, Harlan Williams. Okay. Yeah. And Harlan. But then you get the... the yes. Ca- yeah. Zach, you accurately described as the cash grab in 2020. And it did everything I was hoping it wouldn't do. And it really kind of... It's not soured the franchise, but that it was just, I don't it, know. it did because they never achieved their potential. They did, but then they kind of retconned so it. Dumb. Like at the end of Bogus Journey, you see all the great things they're going to do. And then when yeah. they did Face the Music, it kind of went, nah, never mind. But like, n- just kidding. Yeah, it was terrible. And they so like, they yeah, not like yeah. it. But for one and a half cool movies, <laughs> one and a half. tier two. It's a tier two. I give it, I, t- I give it a great movie, a good movie, and a meh okay. movie. And so I'm giving it a tier two as well. All right. Uh, tier three for me. Okay, yeah. understandable. I'm not. I'm. I didn't. I didn't need to face that music. Bogus station. Oh, but the first station. one is such an excellent adventure. It is yeah. so very much fun. good. George Literally is great in it. <laughs> San Dimas. All right, now we have the ring. Which the ring? Uh, now we're, we should clarify. Uh, we're only doing the American trilogy. Here yeah, because there are like eight Japanese films. Mm-hmm. Uh, But we're doing The Ring in 2002, The Ring 2 in 2005, and Rings Rings. in 2017. So the first two are connected. By the way, the uh, the first one is Gore Verbinski. The second one is... I mean, there's two other directors for the other ones. Hideo Nakata, who... He is the original director of of the Japanese version. And it's... Honestly, the original Japanese version isn't as good as the American remake, which is weird. No. And the stories get pretty crazy. I've now seen a couple of the Japanese Ring movies. Mm -hmm. And Rings tries to kind of follow up... So Rings is the third movie, right? It has nothing to do with Rachel or her son. They try to. He has a name. It's Aiden. Yeah, it's Aiden. He's so creepy. Played by David Dorfman. There were deers. There were deers. There were deers in the second one. Deer as plural for deer. But the third one try to reboot it. Have tail. Like the the videotape has been around, and it's just like a younger cast, and it's just like a typical lame PG thirteen horror movie that people forget about immediately. And I do think the first one is 
Incredible. It's Incredible. so good. Incredible. It's an all-timer. Arguably thriller. Did of not need a follow-up. Because did it, did it tarnish the first movie? Yes. Mm-hmm. The Ring 2 is one of my worst hated movies of all time. We're talking like a one-star <laughs> type of movie here. I hated it. Sure. Rings is also not great. Yeah. So this is a tier three, unfortunately, because it is a tier three horror, yeah. like comedy. Don't do sequels unless you have a plan mm-hmm. initially, because you're just going to water down the franchise yeah. in a well for cool. seven days. Zach, do you give it tier three? I kind of give it a tier two. <laughs> Wait, you like less, more great, mediocre yep. movies. What I, just happened? I kind of like the ring movies better than Kingsman. <laughs> 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 that's that's the gauge. <laughs> That's a hot take. I I don't mind Ring Two. I didn't she hate it so much. Sleeps. It's I you, I, you remember, only remembered you only remembered I remembered Ring, Ring Two, two yeah. more than Ring One. I kind of liked it. I don't know. <laughs> it was a weird time in my life. And then Rings is fine. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I mean, I this is a little squirrely. I'm probably wrong somewhere. No, you're but fine. I'm stuck. Go with it. All right. Now we have the never ending story. Don't make don't make me do this. Turn around. And Look tell at what, what you see. see. So we have you, the Justin. Neverending Story, number two. The next chapter, number three, is Escape from Fantasia. 1984, 1990, and 1984. And it's a tier three. The book centers on a boy, Bastion Balthazar Bucks, an overweight and imaginative child who's neglected by his father after the death of Bastion's mother. That's the book synopsis? Uh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't ever see Bastion as overweight. Nope. Pretty, so, pretty slim little kid. So the first one is directed by Oliver. Wolfgang Peterson, who's a great director. The second one is directed by Australian George Miller. George T. Miller. Yeah, it's not George Miller, oh, but he is Australian. Like yeah. And the third one is Peter McDonald. So they have a different cast, a what, different vision for each of these. Which Did one you has, know there was another Neverending Story movie? Yeah. Which one has Jack Black's eyebrows? Three. three. Okay. Oh, oh, eyebrow. That, singular. Yeah. That one's terrible. Uh, it's this, so bad. This is one of the biggest drop-offs in box office and in ratings. It's like 100 million to start with Neverending Story, 17 million for the second one, 5 million for the third, and ratings at 7.3, 5.1, 3.2. I like Jonathan Brandis in, in number two. two. I remember the glass head with the red memory yeah. ball in it. It kind of has a Return to Oz vibe in yeah. that movie. Yeah. So it is pretty creepy, but nothing compares to that first brilliant movie, in my opinion. Well, and technically, the the first film is the first half of the novel. Yeah. And the second film is the second half. Mm-hmm. And the third is just made up. Yeah. And I love Never Ending Story. Like yeah. The first Never Ending Story. Love sure. that movie. Love, 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 love. But... Not great two, not nope. great three, tier three overall. Tier three. Tier three. And finally for this, our first episode of three. Our apparently. first installment, yes. Yes. We have The Matrix. With an asterisk. Yeah, I guess they made a fourth one. Yeah. Because uh, you have The Matrix in 1999, The Matrix Reloaded in 2003, Matrix Revolutions in 2003, and The Matrix Resurrections in 20. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. The series features a cyberpunk story of the technological fall of humanity in which the creation of artificial intelligence led the way of a race of powerful and civil machines that imprisoned humans in a neural interactive simulation. Directed by the Wachowskis, starring Keanu Reeves, Carrie Ann Moss, and Lawrence Fishburne. And Hugo Weaving. Yeah, that's, oh yeah. Well, how can I forget him? And I love Hugo him Weaving. so much. Uh, big peak here in Matrix Reloaded, the second movie with 741 million. Wow. But The Matrix kills the other movies in IMDb ratings. The first one. Listen, The Matrix is awesome. It's incredible. And the Matrix Reloaded. I remember the most. Guess what? Guess what? When I recently watched it. It's kind of awesome. I, I was I was halfway through the movie going, why do people crap on this? Why? This is awesome. This is so good. And then like the rest of the movie happens and I get it. I'm a defender. But then you see what happens to Neo at the end of the series. And yeah. it is it is a trilogy cap. Like I, I respect the end of the story. I didn't like the way they did it. And it kind of it ruins the second movie completely for me. And I even really? like the rain fight with Neo and all the Smiths more than the Burly Brawl in the second movie. So at the end of the yeah. third one, he has like a rose and rose, a city full of Smiths. Yeah. And I think it's like this anime inspired crazy fight. And yeah, I because they're floating in the air. It's, it's visually incredible. It's but insane. man, that movie is so sloppy. Yeah. It ruins everything for me. Because you get the real life st- uh, stuff in Zion and yeah. it's not great. And then you get the, the, but the car very chase? CGI. Oh, the car chase in number two. In and honestly, the, the ghost twin fantastic. fight in the lobby. Uh, no, the, the new lobby, right? The Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The stairway scene. I freaking love most of that second but movie. But none of it compared to the first movie. It was so close. But at the same time, okay, uh, there are moments in all three movies that I like. Agreed. Same. There are moments that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. And so I'm giving this a tier two overall. High tier two. Doesn't exist. Tier two. 
It does because I gave it a height or two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, Even though we joke, kind of like, you know, Pirates, for example, there's only one movie, right? Technically, we could include Pirates. We're, Save it for another we're, show. We're, oh, we're, Joel's we're, writing it down, everybody. Put that on there? Well, with that, we conclude tw- we have 25, eight tier ones, t- nine tier twos, and eight tier threes. I think threes. we agreed on most we of those. We were almost. Uh, usually this is the part of the episode where I'm like, hey, how many times do you think yeah. we agreed? We almost agreed the entire time. There, okay. It would be easier to tell you I guess. where we didn't. Finger boops? Um, beep. Boop. Uh, triple boop. <laughs> um, we, we were very much in agreement, which means we're right. <laughs> Bacon science. That, that's it. Yeah. Yep. Um, but specifically, I just want to highlight all of our tier one, uh, unanimous tier ones, which include uh, the Three Flavors Cornetto trilogy, the Planet of the Apes reboots, Back to the Future, The Dark Knight, uh, the Terminator movies. What? Um, uh, Indiana Jones and How to Train Your Dragon. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> uh, but uh, those are the ones. If you haven't seen, please seek out those uh, those movies and, and uh, check them out. They're fun. But there's our ratings. We we hope you enjoyed. We hope you played along because we want to hear your opinions on the trilogies that we've ranked on this episode. And are there any other trilogies we didn't bring up that you would like to hear talked about on a future installment because maybe we're doing three of these. There's going to be a really good sequel and a disappointing third act. (laughs) But let us know on Facebook. Let us know on Instagram. Let us know on Twitter. We want to hear from you. But before we go, we'd like to give some love to our patrons, which includes the I Am The Listener tier, which has in it Taylor Sanderson, Some Guy, Certain Madam Hicks, Shannon West, Scott, That Guy Is Staring At My Wife, He Must Love Horsey Sauce Sprague, (laughs) Ryan and Marley, Rocky and Steph, Lady Terry Finley, Juice the Cooler King Swallow, Jennifer Kilkowski, Casey Cummings, Angela Plutz, Alicia Bass, and Adam and Rachel Crump. And then we have our Bacon Council, which includes the other Brit, Johnny English, the one, the only Chris Anderson, Stephen, everyone's favorite Ross, Star Wars expert Kyler, our favorite couple, the Madsons, Nicole D. Kale, Her Royal Highness Jessica Terry, Glow Clint Daniel, Debbie Foster, and Beaker! Thank you, patrons. Thank you, patrons. You are the how to train to our Your Dragon. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. But if you want to find me, you can find me at 76 Joel on Twitter. You can find me performing with Quick Wits, who perform at the Midville Performing Arts Center and the studio at the Parker Theater. For more details, go to qwcomedy.com or go to the Quick Wits Facebook page. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram at Kenny3DD. You can read my movie reviews at ShowtimeShowdown.com. If you'd like to connect with me, you can do so on Twitter and Instagram at Tumbling Mustard. But more importantly, make sure you're following Bacon Sale. Please like that Facebook page and then go to at Bacon Sale on Twitter and Instagram. After you've done that, go to tpublic.com slash Bacon Sale. Get yourself some merch. And then if you like what's going on here and you want to support us further, visit patreon.com slash bacon sale support starts at just three bucks a month and you can get all sorts of fun behind the scenes benefits. And of course, those almost weekly bacon bits where we contemplate what it means to be alive. Patreon.com slash bacon sale. So until next time, this is the end of the episode. Asterix. We here at the Church of the Curly Fry do not approve of that. Is there before Feminagus and after Feminagus? Like BF being... and AF? Hey, it's Bacon Sale. Why didn't we just tier it? Everybody needs a good tier three. Number Hold on, three. one more time. <laughs> James yeah. Franco just wanted to heal Alzheimer's. And then, you, then you see? It was so honorable. I'm not educating my kids like that. <laughs> What's more emotional than pulled punches? <laughs> you guys give a gift tier one and you're both arguing. I love it. <laughs> Bacon Sale. These are the worst movies that I absolutely love. I personally don't accept episode one two or three in my life he doesn't do much batmanning Sega genesis is what you're saying <laughs> Sega. they were roommates Sega. <laughs> there's uh the scene in the uh the, the people where there are headstones the place the what is that called cemetery really just rave reviews from a very intelligent human being <laughs> we don't need another hero <laughs> how many car chases are in taking not enough <laughs> How many cuts are in taken? Far too okay. many. <laughs> Tooken? Or was Teakin? T- talked. To t- Freakin? T- take have taken. Toke. T- t- Relax. <laughs> Juke. To Gakin. Ru- <laughs> Marmite, Vegemite, no Joel. No, that doesn't mean anything bad. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. How do I, how do I, how do I do my thing? 786 Thank Joel. Thank you. Much like Indiana Jones, Barry Bonds was great and we're just going to let it slide. I'm pretty sure. There are eight trilogies on this list that I like worse than this one. I think. Smart Mike, Vegemite, anywhere in sight. Did you just write the hit of the summer? <laughs>